I'm Janina Y, visiting instructor librarian at the University of South Florida Tampa Library Special Collections. Amateur journalism is a genre of uh, literary culture that has been generally overlooked by scholars. They're somewhat the precursor to zines, similar in intent um, in terms of uh, their relative uh, immediacy, their non-commercial, their self-published products. Um, and they're both perfect venues for free speech. One major way that they differ historically is in the printing method. Whereas zines, a product of the modern age, are produced on photocopiers, amateur journals were, and to some degree still are, produced by hand. They're hand printed on a press, often using some form of letterpress printing. Um, nowadays, a mixture of both traditional and modern reproduction practices are utilized. Young people, mostly boys, were encouraged to take up amateur journalism as a hobby in the mid-19th century. Originally, these journals were handwritten. The revival of book arts and letterpress appreciation during the arts and crafts movement, plus the introduction of affordable small printing presses in the 1860s made the mechanics of printing more accessible to a wider demographic of enthusiasts. Then in the late 1800s, amateur press associations were organized as a way for these young people, these ageers as they refer to themselves, who were often very prolific um, creators of these small literary gems to share their creativity. They developed a bundle mail distribution of their journals and an official organ for each association. The associations also provided a forum for camaraderie at yearly conventions. Some of the more pro prominent amateur press associations are the National Amateur Press Association, which was formed in 1871. In 1895, the United Amateur Press Association was independently established by William H. Greenfield. And in 1936, the American Amateur Press Association was developed as an offshoot of the United and recruited a, a younger generation, a new generation, of amateur journalists. Now let's look at a few selections from the collection. The Boys Fool You, edited by Finley A. Grant, New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. This issue is from January 1884. It contains an article titled, An Association Whose History Has Not Been Recorded, An Interesting Account of Civil Rights in the Dom. Dom is the colloquialism that's used to refer to uh, the world of amateur press associations. The author, who is only identified as Rickety, talks about the creation of the four E's, an acronym which represents the Amateur Anti-Negro Admission Association. During the National Convention of 1879, the sole Negro member, Herbert A. Clark, was elected vice president amidst a flurry of confusion and to the credit of the few who opposed the anti-Negro position of the Southern members. This is an excerpt from the text. At first, Clark's membership had assumed the color of a novelty. Many entirely overlooked the Southern principle involved and became curious to know in a wondering way what kind of Negro Clark was and how he acted. Further on, it states, when the nominations of the third vice president were in order, the majority of the members who had agreed to support George Carr, who was the favorite to win the election, were in their high political demoralization scattered everywhere except where they should have been. As a natural result, Clark, backed by a solid caucus, was nominated and elected so rapidly that the few dissenting voices had no opportunity to protest. He was, according to all reports of the convention, elected unanimously. 
the Southerners responded quite aggressively and succeeded not only in getting Clark's election rescinded, but in having the organization's constitution amended to limit its members exclusively to whites. This is one of many indicators of a 19th century racial climate in American history. Another example is uh, from The Conservative, edited by Howard P. Lovecraft. Providence, Rhode Island. This issue is from July 1915, volume one, number two. Lovecraft's editorial review of the pamphlet in minor key executed by one Charles D. Isaacson, a member of the Blue Pencil Club, is particularly scathing and indicative of the time into which it was born. The passage begins with Lovecraft identifying Mr. Isaacson's ethnicity as an explanation for his radical tendencies concerning his regard for Walt Whitman, which he considers incongruous with Aryan taste and culminates with an argument to defend what Lovecraft considers to be the natural system of racial prejudice and the duty of all Americans to serve their country when called to military service. Even though today Whitman is considered one of the most influential of American poets, his work was still controversial in 1915, 60 years after Leaves of Grass was initially published. It is somewhat ironic that Lovecraft, a writer of word fiction, supernatural in content would be so critical of Whitman's use of symbolism and sensuality. Further into his response to Isaacson's writing, Lovecraft broadens his commentary on race to proselytize about the racial and intellectual inferiority of the Amer African black to the white race and even Mongolian races. Mr. Isaacson makes particular mention of the film, The Birth of a Nation, and the activities of the Ku Klux Klan, who Lovecraft defends as that noble but much maligned band of Southerners who saved half of our country from destruction at the close of the Civil War. Lovecraft also states that, race prejudice is a gift of nature, intended to preserve in purity the various divisions of mankind which the ages have evolved in comparing this essential instinct of man with political, religious, and national prejudices, Mr. Isaacson commits a serious error of logic. In Lovecraft's mind, his argument is based on scientific fact, and there are no natural principles that govern people's ability which are limited by race. Lovecraft's perception of racial inequality are well documented in his correspondence and is reflected in his fiction such as in The Prisoners, in The Call of Kululu, or his description of a black character in Herbert West, Reanimator. The Amateur Press Association collection can be found at the University of South Florida, Tampa Library, Special Collections Department.